This is JSA TV, the newsroom for tech and telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. I am coming at you on location in beautiful downtown Chicago, Illinois at the Maven Wave offices. Maven Wave is celebrating 10 years of, uh, of growth in 2018. So we thought we'd stop in and uh, um, talk to their, uh, their, their partners, their, their founders today. And one of those founders is with me right now, Mr. Jeff Lee. Jeff, again, is one of the co-founders along with uh, along with his brother, who I just spoke to, and who you will get to know, um, uh, Jason, as well. But um, uh, Jeff, welcome to JSA TV. We Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you, you. You bet. You bet. So I'm just going to jump right in. Um, the question here is inflection point for Maven Wave. Can you pinpoint for us what at what point did you say we did it or yeah. we're a success? Yeah. Um, Actually, I can. I, it's definitely the year 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of components needed to be successful in this type of business. But as a startup to make it to the next grade, there's two primary capabilities that have to, have to flourish. One of them is the ability to land major new clients. That, that flow has to keep coming, otherwise you run out of work and mm -hmm. people can't it is a promote. You can't get bigger and, and, and you die, so, uh, perhaps slowly. Uh, the other thing, you, and so that year we, we had... Um, uh, a real breakthrough with respect to the position of clients shifting to cloud. We developed a really strong position with, in our relationship with Google. We felt we had earned our way to become a go-to partner for Google. So now as clients shifted more toward cloud and they were ready to embrace it, we were in a great position to take that on. So landing new clients became, uh, it became evident that we'd be able to do that quite well. Uh, the other aspect that you need is uh, talent. And uh, to, to us, talent is everything, and it makes the difference between winning and losing. And uh, we felt we had really built an, ex an exceptional set of talents here, and our reputation in the industry had really grown, and our networks amongst those talents uh, had really flourished as well. So our ability to bring on new talents, uh, we knew we nailed it uh, by 2015, and all of these forces came together, and we knew we were on our way to... Uh, to uh, sustain success. Very cool. Now I was talking to your, your brother Jason earlier, um, and he talked. <laughs> yeah, he was he was lovely. You're you're fine though as well. So, um, but no, in the in the uh, you know two and a half or three hours that I've been in your offices just this morning, it's clear that there is a a very strong working environment and culture um, here at Maven Wave. Why don't you talk to us a little bit about what it is that you're looking for in that talent? Great question. Um, well, we all need technologists, we all need business domain skills, et cetera, but the, the, the main element we always talk about that makes the difference is X factor. Mm -hmm. And to us, the term X factor means it's, it's an intangible quality and it really uh, leads to likability and magnetism and influence and uh, you tend to be successful in situations and um, it just makes, makes a big difference. So you can go through a project and have wonderful technology capabilities but if nobody likes working with you it's a total failure uh, you, you really don't have a business going forward so we work very hard to build this x factor and it's a, it's a dna it's a dna dna we recognize when we're uh, recruiting and interviewing and um, so it, it it makes a big difference because we're a relationship business so the relationships with clients when you, when you bring x factor the, to the table clients want you to work on their projects mm -hmm. And partners like Google want you to work with them to sell and deliver uh, new business. And new talents coming on want to work amongst you. They want to be on your teams, et cetera. So it really, it's pervasive and uh, it is our number one difference maker. So we, we work hard to build a culture that's centered around that X factor and the ideals that, uh, that it brings. Outstanding. So um, let's talk turkey a little bit. And I and you know one of the things I, I promised myself I wouldn't do is just kick around buzzwords all okay. afternoon. Uh, but I'm going to throw one at you right now. Uh, data analytics and um, and the uh, the uh, the existing cl um, climate, um, but more specifically security. Um, those those data anal big data analytics um, and security don't often um, mesh necessarily they're both sexy in their own rights but um, in today's client uh, climate they have to mesh why don't you talk to us a little bit about how maven wave operates in that uh, yeah in that well it's a whole it's kind of a whole progression to get clients to cloud and security is definitely a, a big part of it but uh, from the beginning we've been big proponents of cloud and we've kind of seen what cloud was going to bring and we knew that we're, what you're gonna have to bring is a, a multiple uh, multiple disciplines to to help clients be successful mm -hmm. 
um, it certainly starts with management consulting to understand where are the right opportunities. And as it leads to security, there's some great places, there's some not so smart places to go cloud. And of course, you've got to bring then this lift and shift infrastructure ability to get current applications over into the cloud. And there's some architecting you have to do to make them appropriate for cloud and make them ready to, to operate safely, securely, et cetera. Uh, and then there's application development uh, abilities that uh, to build these elegant, ele elegant solutions that, uh, that perform well in kind of a cloud, uh, kind of a digital uh, era in, in environment. And then security really is a combination of the methods and disciplines you put to that and, and the care you put into, plus the cloud providers are making a whole, uh, a whole lot of headway in that way and making it much easier for us uh, to build those protections. You're obviously protecting the data and you're protecting access to the applications and uh, we've worked hard to develop those, those, uh, those expertise that are necessary mm -hmm. to do that. So we're, we're on the subject of consulting. Um, obviously there's a lot of upfront um, back and forth that has to happen, consultative, is that a word, consultative? Uh, I, I think, I th okay, yeah. Con consulting. Um, and your job really is to kind of pinpoint what those pain points might be um, on the consulting side. So, you know, how do, how do you do that? What, tell, tell me a little bit about the strategy there. Great, uh, great question too. Um, there's a lot of hype about digital and digital transformation and digital era, et cetera. And to us, that really means, um, it really means a, 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 a move forward in expectations. The millennial way is taking over and that's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, people want to do everything online. They want social around it. They want new product coming at them fast. They want the, the uh, company to know about them before they even have to tell the company about them. Um, they want everything mobile, et cetera. That's all great things. and so that expectation set is moving forward quickly. And these are employees in their companies and these are customers. These are real people that are working on the other side. So that expectation set is moving out there fast. So now it's up to which companies can race after that and actually capture and deliver on those expectations. It gives you a nice playing field for new entrants to actually outpace the existing ones and perhaps win a lot of business that you know, in the past, you know, they wouldn't have been able to, 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 to do that. Uh, especially with cloud technologies, they're, they're able to do that. So we are trying to help our clients become successful in that era, and there's really a handful of strengths that they need to uh, get to to be successful in, in playing on that field. Um, one of the first ones is customer intimacy or customer obsession. Sure. So they need to know what the customer needs before the customer even tells them that. Uh, that's, that's one. Another one is, is product-driven uh, velocity. So the speed at which some of the most innovative companies you think of out there, the, the Googles and the Amazons and Spotify and all that, they release products so fast. And a lot of these you know, large enterprises traditionally, fight, they could never keep up with that naturally. So they really need to shift to, to produce uh, product cycles and delivery cycles in, in, in a new way. Uh, the data-driven decision-making is something that uh, clients need to be successful. And obviously uh, leveraging the cloud and building cultures that are really uh, high, um, highly infused with innovation and collaboration, so that ideas from the front line make their way to uh, make their way to reality for customers. Because some of these people on the front line are the first ones to see what customers need. So getting to these strengths is really the heart of what our consulting is all about. And uh, we we we're working feverishly to bring the disciplines together, get the clients to understand the mindset they need to shift into, and uh, drive the initiatives that uh, that get them there. Outstanding. So uh, digital trans, um, transformation um, affects all businesses, from the startup to the Googles. Um, but the kind of consulting you do, obviously, is going to vary depending on whether they're a Fortune 500 company, which you folks work with, or, or you know, someone just opening up a shop. So what, do you, what, what, what is your mindset like when you go in to consult with both the mom and pop and the sure. Google? Well, the mom and pop is, is super exciting because mm -hmm. um, some ways we relate to it. We were just the mom and pop or brother and brother, however you <laughs> want to say that, uh, 10 years ago. And um, it's super exciting to, because again, I, I keep men mentioning cloud, but it just gives you these disruptive economics that you could never achieve in the mm -hmm. past. I mean, a, a little guy could not compete with the big guy. They just get squashed out of the market. But now you have a chance because you can be much bigger than you yeah. otherwise would be. You can afford to do it. You can move fast and you don't have the baggage. So it's really fun, just like we had when we started, that we, we can be really nimble and fast and go after. We see the target, we can move there. We don't have to shift the Titanic uh, to somehow get there. So it's really fun to go in and, and help 
uh, new, uh, new, uh, new startups uh, get, get there. And a lot of times they actually question whether, you know, are we too much in the mindset of working with the big behemoth yeah. enterprises? And we say, no, 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 remember who we are. This, you, yeah. you are who we were, and we can't wait to do this for you. So that's the, that's the mentality with the, with the startups, the, the new players. Uh, with the large enterprise um, uh, clients, uh, it's kind of funny because they, they went from resisting and deferring the idea of moving to digital, moving to cloud, uh, meaning it's not safe, it's not secure, all that stuff, to now they can't get it fast enough. And their uh, feeling right now is there's a lot of frustration because they're tired of seeing the the sizzle of the use cases that are sort of like years in the future. They, they have years before they can get to this place uh, in, in many cases. They have the realities of legacy. You know, they have the realities of yeah. multi, you know, complex organizations that, would that need to change to be able to embrace what, what these new technologies uh, can do for them. So we like to work with the large clients to say, we know that that's tomorrow and you need help today. So getting together with them and focusing on what can they do today. And so specifically, when you're dealing with the large uh, uh, clients, um, you, you have to, you know, number one, you have to take, you have to find threads that you can operate in. You cannot teach the entire 50,000 orga person organization to change how they think and reassemble their teams and all that stuff. You've got to find threads of work that you can show how it executes. You build agility, product-driven streams. You get everybody on board and you move quickly and you deliver a stream. A lot of times it's kind of like, for those who are technologists, it's like the microservices concept. You know, a microservice breaks every, all these monolithic, monolithic systems down into small uh, solutions and services such that you can spin them up and spin them down quickly. Mm -hmm. You need to do that with change initiatives in these large organizations. Prove your success, build some momentum. A lot of people, you know, jump on board. Um, another, uh, aspect really is uh, that is kind of having a, a resurgence in the industry from my you know couple of decades of experience is change management and adoption um, the uh, the idea that technology is going to just be thrown into these user uh, groups user organizations and they're all just going to embrace it and start using it whether they're serving customers or it's the customers themselves is a fallacy right. you have to apply the change management the adoption uh, the champion efforts, the leadership, um, the servant leadership type uh, uh, concepts as well. So all of that has to be there. And I would say finally, um, uh, these, are, these are massive organizations, very complex. There's, um, you have to structure the teams in a way that you can't, you can't make decisions across hundreds of you know, decision make. You can't move fast if you're waiting for them all to make decisions. So again, these threads of work. And that's where we kind of uh, have the benefit of being a bunch of management consultants at heart. Yeah. So you have a portfolio of opportunities. You got a portfolio of, I mean, changing opportunities. You can't plan, you know, 150 projects in advance for the next two years because everything's going to change underneath you. So you have to instill this mentality that you're constantly looking at a portfolio that's changing in terms of the benefits that are, that are available to you, the technology is available to you, the problems that are rising to the top, and you have to go through, through these iterative cycles uh, to make it happen. So mm -hmm. it does involve this mind shift of change from this project and budget oriented, you know, where we fix it for the next couple of years to this rolling, you know, portfolio of what's the next greatest opportunities we can deliver on. Mm -hmm. So. Outstanding, Jeff. Thank you very much. And, and clearly that, um, that philosophy is working for Maven Wave with uh, 10 years of growth. Um, congratulations there. Thank yeah. you very much for Thanks, being Steve. with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate and thank you viewers for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.